Okay, so um, let me take this opportunity to welcome our entire audience this morning. Uh, my name is uh, Patrick Kariwo on behalf of Brand Africa. We would like to welcome you all. Uh, we are really working with uh, the Insurance Council of Zimbabwe, who are making it possible for us to deliver this uh, particular uh, uh, conversation. And we are eternally grateful for their support uh, all the way throughout uh, with the webinars and all the other promotions that are happening alongside. Um, today is once again a uh, going back, if you will, to our conversation in agriculture. Uh, and today we are looking at livestock investment as our particular focus. So if that is your particular bent in farming, we would like to welcome you, or indeed if you are considering going that particular direction. Let me just hasten before we get too much into the details of today to remind all our listeners that the Insurance Council of Zimbabwe, which I will call ICZ from now on, uh, is actually uh, present in Bulawayo, uh, which is why this particular focus of our conversation has a leaning, if you will, towards our Bulawayo market, because we know that uh, they are also heavily invested in livestock investment and production. So uh, we are hoping that our presence as ICZ at uh, the ZITF will also stimulate that part of the audience, uh, or indeed if you are just there as uh, uh, either an exhibitor or a visitor, we encourage you to go to the ICZ stand where members of uh, ICZ will be present uh, to host you and also guide you into uh, another different level of this conversation. But without further ado, let's get into the meat of why it is that we are gathered today. I do say that livestock investment is the background. Uh, indeed, how do you unlock value in this particular area and how do you protect that value once you've unlocked it? Uh, because livestock tends to be a very natural expression for most Zimbabweans, uh, particularly as they mature in their work life, uh, that, that they tend to alternately go into livestock production or investment, uh, or alternately into other forms of agriculture uh, as an expression of their uh, uh, post-professional life. But as you can see, uh, agriculture and indeed livestock is coming more and more into the mainstream. So we'd like to find out how it is that you can turn this into a successful business. So today's conversation is essentially a two-part discussion, and it will focus first of all on how you can make this livestock part of your investment a success. And for that part of the discussion, we are going to open that discussion or conversation, if you will, with somebody you have come to know well. Uh, his name is Rawlings Coffee. Rawlings Coffee, of course, is the proprietor of Agribusiness Media, and we are pleased that he could make it and you'll hear from him before too long. And then he will be supported uh, shortly thereafter with an extension of that conversation by a representative of the insurance industry. And I'm uh, delighted and thrilled to inform you that we are today in the company of Limbai Kuvoruno, who represents Zimbabwe insurance brokers. So let me just start by welcoming uh, our first speaker, who is Rawlings Coffee. Rawlings, good morning to you and welcome, sir. Uh, morning, Patrick, and uh, good morning to you all our farmers. It's great that you could make it, Rawlings. And as I've said, listeners, Rawlings is going to talk about how you can make the business of livestock production uh, an investment, a success. How do you make it happen? Uh, indeed, because there are numerous examples of those who are doing it well. But as uh, I'm sure uh, for, the, for all the numbers that are doing it well, uh, there are probably even higher numbers for those who could be doing it better and regrettably, those who may actually be failing in that uh, pursuit. Uh, but uh, I'm delighted that uh, Rawlings has the background and indeed has the exposure in agriculture to be able to bring uh, a perspective to this conversation that I can assure you will make a difference to what you are trying to do. So um, let's get straight into it. Rawlings, can I hand over to you? Uh, how can we make livestock investment a success? Yeah, sure. Uh, many thanks, Patrick. So I will cover on key success factors 
for uh, livestock uh, farm businesses. And let me go straight into uh, my presentation. So the starting point I would say would be a risk management, but let me leave this to Wimbai. I think she's um, uh, the one who will cover this in detail. So I'll go uh, on to, 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 to the next one. Uh, that is a feasibility study. So in any business, it is always important to start with a feasibility study. This is an important tool and I've seen a lot of farmers underestimate uh, its effect. So we need not to underestimate its role in the success of our uh, livestock uh, businesses. It does answer uh, key questions to your farm business. And uh, for instance, it, it helps you to answer on whether or not a proposed livestock uh, or any other project, be it even in crop production should go ahead way before you start your, your, your project. So the process of uh, coming up with a feasibility study will then help you to get it right before you commit resources such as uh, your feed, such as your breeding stock, uh, veterinary drugs, and other things to, to an idea that may not work uh, as, as you were thinking that uh, you know, it, 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 it would work or uh, an idea that may not work as you had planned. So the study or the feasibility study helps you to consider or to see the bigger picture. That's helping you to think in a, a top bottom approach. And the process of coming up with a feasibility study really is uh, very simple. You can do it by yourself. Or if you want, you can hire agricultural uh, experts to, to help you or to guide you. But it's better done by the farmer uh, with, with guidance from other uh, experts in the, in the industry. So you need to know, for instance, you expected profits before you go into actual livestock production. You also need to look at uh, the opportunities in the, value, uh, in the value chain that you're interested in. You need to know the capital required. You need to know the break-even uh, point or the break-even analysis of your business. All these questions will be answered in uh, uh, your, your feasibility study. So in short, what we are saying is uh, don't start before knowing what you are going into. And don't put a cart before the horse. So start, with, start off with a feasibility study to know what you are going into, to have a bigger picture, of what you are going into to know what you need to succeed before you commit your, your resources. The next step is knowledge. You need to gather knowledge. You can get knowledge in terms, uh, maybe in form of training, but what you need to do is to ensure that your training will then cover both technical and business aspects of your livestock business. Technical, that is, uh, you need to know the breeds, the nutrition, uh, be it the general management of the business, the health uh, of, of your animals, uh, housing, and so forth. You have to know the diseases, ways of prevention, and uh, cure. So remember, this is done before you go into actual production. It, uh, it saves you a lot. It saves you unnecessary losses or unnecessary expenses. So the business aspect is equally important. I've seen a number of uh, trainers really focus more on the technical uh, part, leaving the business side. You need to know your numbers and don't be intimidated by maths or, or accounts. It's not that complicated. You can also hire a consultant if you want to help you on this one. So many trainers leave this part and focus on the technical issues, like I said, but then the result is you then have highly technical farmers that are poorly managing their businesses, which then uh, is a disaster in waiting. And uh, as, as you gather your knowledge, it is also important that you visit other livestock farms. And maybe due to biosecurity issues, you may have to book before you visit them. It is also important that when you visit, ask a lot of questions and carry with you a notebook or if you want a recording device. 
and, and also remember that you need to visit non-successful or unsuccessful uh, farmers. And by visiting both the successful and the unsuccessful, you benefit more from your uh, quest for, 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 for knowledge. The other thing that is important is marketing. You can produce the best livestock. You can produce the best broilers or any other livestock. But if the market doesn't know your product or if the market doesn't know you, you definitely fail. So you need to invest in marketing. Don't leave marketing to chance. How much are you going to sell your product for? What exactly is your product? What can your, or maybe where can your customers buy your products from? And do you have strategies in place to promote your products to, to your target customers? So these are the key questions that you should answer or that you should have answers for before going into your, 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 your business. And if you had started, you need to pause and relook at, uh, at your marketing strategy. I know feeding animals uh, or livestock takes time, but don't leave marketing to chance. It converts all your hard work. The work that you do feeding, injecting your animals, protecting them uh, from predators, from theft, it converts all that hard work into cash. And that's marketing. And on marketing, I think let me mention that the market is not your friend. I define the marketing, uh, the, the market as, as an economic machine. And it doesn't care whether you as a livestock farmer have made uh, a profit or you as a broiler farmer has made a profit or loss. The broilers or the livestock that you have fed for weeks gave you profit, it doesn't care. So you need to study the market, study it carefully to see how best you can uh, manipulate uh, the, the market. Visit abattoirs, visit auctions, uh, visit uh, butcheries and all other livestock markets. And these visits or a research that you are doing prior to going into production won't cost you much. Let me show you the following short video. It's uh, by Alberta Agriculture but you'll see how it can apply to, to your farm businesses. You've got a great idea for a new product or service, and you're ready to start selling. But who will you sell it to? Do they want or need your product? Are other businesses already meeting their needs? How much will they be willing to pay? This is where market research becomes crucial because it removes the guesswork, allowing you to make powerful business decisions based on facts. When starting your research, here are some of the major things you should consider. Every customer has different needs and wants, making it impossible to please them all. Focusing only on your target segment, those who are most likely to buy will make selling and advertising easier and more effective. Identifying who your competitors are and which marketing channels they're utilizing will help you determine which channel is most suitable for your product. Reviewing the prices of competitive products will help you understand at what price your product may sell. Comparing this price against your cost of production will help you determine if you can achieve a suitable profit. If not, then you may need to reevaluate your marketing channel or your production costs. There are two ways to gather this information, primary and secondary research. Secondary research is inexpensive and fairly easy to obtain, while primary research can be more insightful but is also more expensive. So before you begin production, set yourself up for success by gathering information that will help you make smart, strategic business decisions. To learn more about market research, Okay, so that was a short video to show you the importance of uh, market research. Now uh, back to our presentation. It brings us another important uh, aspect, which is a value addition. Don't sell your livestock or try to avoid selling your livestock uh, or your livestock products as they are. If it's cattle, why don't you fatten your cattle before selling? It takes about 90 days to fatten your cattle. Maybe that will then transform uh, 
them from a lower grade, which is economy, to a better grade like choice or super. And what's stopping you from selling packaged or branded chicken cutlets or even whole beds? Why are you not selling, uh, say, uh, pre-cooked or par-boiled mazondo? And you know that uh, the market loves that delicacy and they've, they may have no time to cook. So this is what I mean when I say start the market. That's where all your, uh, your answers are. And also this requires that we see beyond the farm gate and to think outside the box. Don't underestimate yourself by thinking that your part as a farmer or your role as a farmer is only to feed uh, your, your livestock, no. Look at the whole value chain and see for yourself a lot of opportunities that are there. But for this to happen, your management must be top notch. Record keeping has to be done properly. I visited a lot of uh, livestock farms where you find production records and not any single business record. They know when their livestock, livestock A got sick, they know how it was treated and how it responded to, 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 the, to the veterinary drugs, but they don't know how much it was sold for let alone the cost of production. So in short, they don't know whether or not they made a profit or, or loss. Such livestock projects eventually close. So you need to count and account for everything. Don't take shortcuts in your business. In Shona, they say, Jaka Chipa is not Dura. Feed your animals as uh, per your feed uh, suppliers instructions or for your breeding stock suppliers recommendations. Should you prefer making your own feed, you need to consult nutritionist and get your feed or your own farm feed formulation tested by the Department of Research and Specialist Services before you start feeding your animals. It is also important to buy your supplies, including your breeding stock and feed from reputable uh, suppliers or companies. Please let me uh, watch the following short video it shows the dangers or one of the dangers of uh, uh, taking shortcuts in your farm uh, business. I think it circulated a year or two ago, but it's still relevant. provincial deputy spokesperson. Before me is what is seemingly a uh, broiler chickens. If you, you look at these uh, chicks, you might think they are broilers. And uh, let me tell you, these chicks are now four weeks old, but uh, they appear like uh, three-day-old chicks. And uh, these chicks, are they feed a lot, but they don't grow. At four weeks, they are uh, actually broiler chickens should be about one point five uh, pages but now these ones are 80 grams which is a serious loss to a farmer a, a blawayo farmer uh, lost ten thousand six hundred dollars to a fraud who has since been arrested the fraud is a, a, a mad Nyati who resides at R79 in Ziligas. he was going around in blawayo duping farmers saying he was selling some chicks broiler chicks and farmers were preparing for the festive season and he instead he supplied them with what is not even broilers. You cannot even give the name of these chicks what they are, but they don't grow. They feed, they don't rest, they fight like road runners. And he So those are the dangers of uh, taking uh, shortcuts. So we also need to beware of con men. You know, they wake up daily to strategize on how they can steal your hard earned uh, money. It is also important uh, to take care of your farm workers. And I like call them, to call them uh, farm assistants. You need to pay them well. You need to motivate them. You also need to motivate them, be it intrinsic or extrinsic motivation. Offer them accommodation. Your farm cannot be successful without your farm assistance. 
you also need to pay them on, uh, on time as you had agreed. And also don't wait until they ask you for, uh, for, for, for their dues. In the case that you are likely to miss their salary dates, you need to engage them and inform uh, them ahead of time. So another thing that we need to do for our uh, livestock farm businesses to succeed is to scale up. Say you started off with 100 broilers. Why are you still doing 100? Why not grow, say, to 25, to 125, that's 25%, or to 150, that's 150%. That will then uh, ensure that you are taking advantage or you are um, maximum, that's maximum utilization of your livestock uh, investment. So as I wind up, I would like to remind farmers that farming uh, is a business and always run it as such never take shortcuts, uh, shortcuts. Thank you. And thank you, Rawlings. Uh, we appreciate that uh, overview. And uh, yeah, uh, quite a few lessons there that, uh, you know, even though that I'm not a livestock farmer, but a lot of what you said made sense, just from a general business point of view. And uh, I think the most important of which was just the value of planning in this time because uh, I think it was Sun Tzu who said, the war is won before it is fought, uh, which really just uh, in a different way emphasizes the value of that planning. So we thank you for your contribution and especially uh, the videos which uh, made the whole message come alive. Uh, so to our audiences, um, that was the first part uh, of our conversation, which is uh, aiming to uh, share with you lessons on how you can succeed in this particular discipline of livestock investment. I did suggest to you earlier that uh, we have another speaker and that speaker is Vimbai Kuvoruno. Vimbai is a um, regional manager for Zimbabwe Insurance Brokers. And she will be talking to us about risk management strategies that you could deploy in order to protect your livestock investment. And as you can understand, this is the interest, this is the objective for ICZ to make sure that you become more literate in your business. And by doing so, you can protect your efforts and make sure that your success is sustainable into the long term. So Vimbai um, uh, is a, a regional manager, as I say, with uh, Zimbabwe Insurance Brokers. She has been in the insurance industry uh, for 18 years, and she uh, covers the markets of uh, Matavela and North and South, including the Midlands province. So Vimbai, can I say good morning to you and welcome? Morning, Patrick. Great to have you. Uh, so now that we have you, Vimbai, can we get straight into it? And my first question to you is, you know, you probably heard uh, the, the background provided by uh, Rawlings. So my question to you, just to begin with, is a general one, and then we will move into more specific questions. So it is to say, um, is it actually possible in the first place for farmers to protect their livestock investment? Um, thank you for that, Patrick. Um, it is possible for farmers to ensure their um, products, that's a form of risk management. You're protecting your assets. Basically, when you are a farmer, you are saying to yourself, how best can I protect my, my investment? And your investment is in livestock. And how do I go about it? You transfer the risk. You transfer the risk. There are so many ways in which people can actually um, ensure their risks or protect their investment. You have physical structures that you put. You're basically protecting your, your, your livestock. You have human resources, people that you say they should look after your livestock. That's also a form of protecting your, your risk and your livestock. You can get financing from the banks that's another way of protecting your, your, your livestock investment. And what I'm going to be talking about will be risk management, which is linked to transferring your risk to people who will pay you when you have a loss, 
a portion so that you don't go back to zero when you lose your investment. That sounds like a very practical kind of wisdom and it certainly makes sense to me, uh, which leads me to my next question. So who is it that should be concerned with this kind of uh, uh, risk management within the livestock industry? Which people should consider themselves the ideal market for your business? Uh, Patrick, as long as you've got um, 30 chicks or chickens that you're growing at your home, you can start transferring your risk to insurance. So we're talking about the small subsistence farmer to the commercial farmer. The farmer in the rural areas who's got 10 uh, cattle that they want to protect in the event of different um, perils that may follow, which we'll talk about as we continue with the presentation. So if you're a communal farmer with less than 100 or a commercial farmer with above 100, we will protect you and you can take up uh, insurance and transfer your risk to someone else who is knowledgeable. Hello, Vimbai, can you hear me? Yes, yes Patrick. Oh, good, yeah. sorry, we lost you there for a little bit. Oh, okay. I had said okay. um, we are looking at everyone from subsistence farmers to cooperatives to commercial farmers. When you're looking at yourself, Patrick, you may have 50 or less chickens that you're growing at home. You can actually transfer that risk to insurance and have it managed by insurance companies. You can have a communal farmer who's got a head of cattle, which is less than 100, or a commercial farmers who've got more than 100 cattle or 100 um, livestock. We are insuring all this. So it, we are cutting across from the subsistence farmer to the commercial farmer. Very interesting, Limbai. Can I just ask, given the exposure you have in insurance, what are the trends that you are seeing in terms of uptake? Are um, people generally becoming better acquainted with the idea of insurance and are they practicing the discipline? What would you, what, what are you seeing? Uh, what I'm seeing over the past couple of years, um, having been in insurance for a very long time, before it was more insurance uh, for livestock or risk transfer to, uh, for insurance was mainly on commercial farmers. But over the past couple of years, say five years, going back five years, we've seen a lot of um, smallholder farmers who are in livestock actually taking up insurance. This also has been prompted by the fact that banks would want a collateral. Banks would also ask for a form of insurance when they're giving you money because they know of the risks that are there when they give someone money and there's no form of risk transfer, which is there, a cushion in the event that something goes wrong uh, on the livestock uh, part. We also have um, non-governmental organizations who are supporting uh, projects to do with livestock who would require risk transfer? Because once there's a loss, um, they don't want the farmer to go back to zero and they start funding again. So there's been a lot of uptake across from the communal farmers, people who come in as groups uh, being funded by organizations as well as commercial farming. So there really has been quite a, a huge um, uptake. This also is stemming from the fact that um, Agriculture has really been boosted up by the government. And we notice in 2021, 2022, from the statistics that we have from the Minister of um, Lands, it shows that um, there is an increase in terms of production, though some areas have had uh, reduced uh, production of livestock. This uh, has prompted a lot of people to take up uh, insurance. Very interesting. Uh, in fact, now that you say that, um, I would be further interested in you perhaps shedding light on the kind of risks that are associated with livestock farming, because for all the success that you have seen with people who are taking up insurance, I'm sure there may be a number, if not more, of those who are not yet aware what there is, what benefits there are uh, from risk management. Uh, so what are the risks that you are seeing uh, in your experience that are associated with livestock farming? 
um, we are seeing a theft. What's happening is under the um, farm uh, livestock insurance, we have um, theft, which is generally not covered, which is now being covered, obviously at an additional cost to the standard uh, cost of um, insuring uh, livestock. We have electrocution, we have diseases, we have fire, um, with excessive rains, flooding. I think at one time there was a, a WhatsApp uh, which was circulating where someone had uh, invested over 10,000, was expecting 10,000 US from uh, the sale of their um, chickens. And one morning woke up and the whole fowl run was flooded with water. And that would be a big loss. So you find that is also covered under insurance. Um, apart from that, we also have disease, which is also covered. And once you have your cover, it also stretches to cover liabilities. I think uh, along the highways, especially where I am in Matebele land, we have a lot of um, stray animals. And you find you can have a, a donkey or a cow or a, whatever animal right at the side of the road having been hit, the liability can actually attach to the farm owner because you've left your cow to stray onto the road and the person can come and pick up if you've got five, stay a subsistence farmer. You can say the five cows that you have at your house, I'm taking them. We actually have a case like that where somebody uh, said, your cow caused damage to my car and this is the cost. The subsistence farmer just said a few cows and the men had to take those cows and sell them, which is quite sad. It's a depressing story, but true story. So liabilities to third parties. Uh, we all know that they can stray and eat into a, a field, a neighboring farmer's field. Those are the common ones, but we also have those extreme ones where payment will need to restitution will be made to third parties. Um, I can just also say that based on the statistics that we have, We've also noted that from the Ministry uh, of uh, Lands and Agriculture, they have given us a, a summary of the top three, uh, actually they are about top five mortalities. In 2021, we have injuries. This is also covered. Diseases, 86%. It's also covered. Predators, four to 5%. And others, anything that you think is a risk, you bring it forward to insurance, it can be bought at a premium, at an additional premium. So we tailor make your cover for the farmer, but these are the basic risks that we are covering under insurance. Yes, and again, you know what, as we go deeper into this, this becomes even more interesting. Um, you talk about uh, personal injury. Uh, do you have any idea the prevalence uh, of injury in this sector? Because I know that uh, there is a tendency on the part of subsistence farmers to skip some of these disciplines. And uh, just out of interest, uh, what, do you have any idea uh, what the trends are in that particular area, personal injury? Uh, personal injury, I do not have the statistics, but what I know is that once... Uh, your livestock causes injury to a person, insurance will actually pick it up. The liabilities that we have mostly, that we have seen coming through are mainly from our roads. Those are the ones that come through. So in the event that somebody is injured while they're in the car or there's death that has been caused, it is actually paid by insurance under your livestock insurance policy. Right. And that would be indeed a wise business decision, because as we know, uh, what we do know is that we never know what is going to happen. And uh, from what you say, uh, there is a high prevalence uh, of some of these incidents, uh, particularly if you look at the uh, state of the national road network and yeah. uh, how that might impact, uh, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the, the team members or workers concerned. So thank you for that, uh, Bimbai. Uh, I think my next, next question would be, if one decides to take up insurance uh, as a form of uh, risk management, what benefit or covers does one actually get? I know you maybe covered a few of these, but can we just uh, go over that again, uh, okay. just so our, uh, our farmers are uh, extra clear on uh, okay. uh, what potential benefit there is? 
All right, we're looking at um, impact from uh, accidents as in indicated earlier, diseases and illness. Um, we have fire, the floodings that I spoke about, impact by any road vehicle or rolling stock. I spoke about the liability side, but at the same time, you would have lost your, 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 your livestock it will also need to be replaced. You need to get something out of it so that you can go and buy another one. So you also be paid. So you're covering liability as well as the loss of your, your, your livestock. We're also covering non-political riots and strikes. Say there's been a strike and maybe by your employees uh, over some issue, you um, maybe some, by some reason, you lose one or two of your uh, head or be it chickens, you can actually be covered because it's not political riot. And then we're also covering you electrocution and you can get a transit cover. I know we move, most uh, farmers move their livestock from one place to the other. It can be from Blue Ayo, you want to take it to Arare, or you're moving it from the rural areas, you're taking it from the Abacho. You can get transit cover, which will cover you for the movement of your, of, of your stock should something happen, an eventuality happen. And theft of these livestock uh, through uh, electrocution, we've already indicated that. For epidemics, there is cover for epidemics. We've had droughts in the past and we may have them again in the future. We are also covering that. And obviously it's at an additional uh, cost. Uh, we're looking at diseases like maybe foot and mouth, which may be declared by the government in an area it can be covered under your livestock uh, cover uh, for 100 cattle plus or 500 goats, but we can as well arrange for this cover if you have less. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically, that, those are some of the additional covers that are there under livestock insurance. Right. I'd like to take you back, Limba, if I could just a little bit. It just came to mind uh, because of what you mentioned of the prevalence of uh, road accidents that are caused by uh, stray animals. And I travel a fair bit myself on the national road network, uh, uh, particularly when it's high conference season. And I still, to this day, see uh, animals, stray animals on the road. Uh, are any... Uh, are there any developments in terms of raising awareness on behalf of uh, farmers? How aware of farmers are they of their potential liability, you think? Um, thank you for that question, Patrick. I think it's uh, uh, something that we need to take up with, I think, ICZ and ourselves to make, to really make um, farmers aware that um, they need for them to look after their cattle and then there is policies that can actually cover them in the event that animals stray. They are animals, they're expected to stray. And I think the government has also tried to put, I think, fencing along the Bulawayo Road. There's been fencing, but I think our challenge, Patrick, is there are gates that are there on those fences. I think the members right. of the public also need to be made aware that those gates need to be closed at all costs. Most of the time, mm. when you use those mm. gates, please close them because an effort has been made to try and reduce. So we, as the, insure, uh, as the members of the public, should also uh, improve and try and make sure that we close the gates and there are no stray uh, animals which, which get onto the roads. But I think there's more awareness that is needed, especially from our side, to make the insuring public and the members of the public know that there is a way of getting some form of cover to prevent this, apart from physically uh, reducing these, um, these, these kind of uh, losses. Yes, indeed, indeed. Yeah. Well, a final question, uh, Vimbai, is now that you've uh, given us this breakdown of what is possible uh, to achieve in terms of cover, uh, where, where and how do people actually get this cover? Uh, can you be approached directly? Yes, we can actually be uh, approached directly. Um, my numbers are available 0772 385521. Uh, we are insured, I work for an insurance broking firm. So basically we deal with every insurance company in Zimbabwe that is registered with IPEC. Meaning as long as you offer cover, for agriculture and for livestock, we will place business with all insurance companies in Zimbabwe. 
And how we do that is we go to the farms. The, we have agronomists that we contract with, uh, in partnership with the insurance companies. They look at the farm. We tailor make a product because one farm, your farm is different from Rawlings farm and is different from Mr. Bill's farm. So because of that, different insurers have got uh, different strengths in terms of offering uh, farm policies. So in terms of livestock, we know who's the best. We, you can actually contact us directly. You can contact us through our offices. As Zimbabwe insurance brokers, we actually have wide coverage. We are in Buluweyo, we are in Mashingo, we are in Harare, we are in Mutare. So countrywide, we can actually offer you cover. Terrific. Uh, that is truly good news. And uh, well, thank you for your uh, uh, contribution. I don't know if you, do you have uh, one last comment before we go back to Rawlings uh, so that we can now um, use the remainder of our time to try and generate some kind of conversation with our audience? Um, I think um, I'm done. Thank you so much. I think we'll take questions. Wonderful. Thank you, Bimbai. Uh, so Rawlings, let me come back to you, if I may. Uh, I'm not sure what we have or don't have in our chat box or any other means that uh, people have had uh, to gain access to you. Uh, perhaps this might be a good time for us to generate some kind of conversation with our audience through a question and answer. Uh, thank you both, by the way, uh, for your contributions, uh, starting off as you did, uh, Rawlings, with how farmers can make that livestock discipline or investment a success and then following thereafter uh, with Vimbai uh, Kuvoruno, who gave us an idea what risk management strategies are possible to deploy even as that happens. So Rawlings, if I can come back to you, how do we stand uh, for Q&A? Yeah, sure, thanks, uh, Patrick. I think we have uh, a number of questions and comments here uh, that we're coming through from uh, our farmers and uh, please do keep them coming. Uh, the first one here is from Tino. Tino says, uh, many things uh, have been by. I am a subsistence farmer trying to migrate to commercial uh, farming. Right now, I have about 250 road runners. Can this be insured? So I guess, Wimbai, you can take that up. Yes, uh, this can be insured. Uh, you just let us know where you are. Uh, if you are on, um, if you're on electronic uh, mode, you can just send us an email at uh, zib at zib.co.zw. What we will do is we'll give you a proposal form and we will uh, advise you on what are the requirements for your road runners. This can actually be insured. And we'll also give you, I, I forgot to say this, Patrick, in mm. terms of risk management, insurance is just not just about giving people, giving insurance companies money. We actually service you. We will come to your farm, we'll look at what you have, and we'll give you advice on how best you can protect your risk. As I indicated earlier, that we put so many things in order to say we are protecting our livestock or our investment, meaning the structures will be looked at. If there are improvements that need to be done, this advice will be given to you at no additional cost to our insured. Once you are our client, we then advise you that you need to do A, B, C, D, E in order for you to protect your risk and you get money as Rolling alluded to. It's all about making money at the end of the day and making livestock insurance a business. Well, thanks for that, Rimbai. It's pleasing to know that uh, the insurance players are prepared to actually go out to the farmers. Uh, and I'm sure that will be well received by our audience. Rawlings, can we come back to you? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, thanks, uh, Vimbai, uh, for, for taking that one. Uh, Murape here says, through uh, Rawlings, I am one of the farmers who does not see value in farm business records. I will invite you to my farm soon. Uh, okay, Murape, I'll be glad to uh, uh, come. Then another one here is Rutendo. Rutendo says, thanks ICZ for this insightful webinar. Is there in transit insurance for livestock? I think Vimbai touched on this. I don't know if you want to add anything there, Vimbai. Um, 
I'll just I'll just confirm that yes, there is transit cover for insurance. Once you take up your livestock policy, we have an extension for transit, the same way we have an extension for your liability. So in terms of your transit, what you do is you advise us what you are moving from when to where, from where to where and how much. And then that cover will actually be placed. It's available. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Mimbai. It reminds me of this picture that has been circulating on, on WhatsApp. Uh, I think there's a farmer who lost goods worth over 3,800. Uh, due to, I think they used an enclosed uh, truck, you know, those similar to, to those that transport bread. They used those ones to transport goats and unfortunately they suffocated. So uh, risk management there is, is very, very important even when uh, transporting your, your animals. Then another one is from Notando. Notando says, I stay in Solusi area Matebeleland I'm planning to import boa goats from uh, SA from South Africa. Can this be covered by insurance in um, their way from South Africa to, to Zim? Yes, it can be covered. Um, that will be called an open marine policy where we are looking at where the goats are coming from. Uh, you also give us the dates. The, uh, I was going to make a response as well to what you said, Rawlings, in terms of those goats that um, died in transit. When you take up your transit cover, as your advisors in Brooking, we will also advise you of what mode of transport to use and how, we, when you tell us, because obviously you tell us I'm going to be moving my, 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 my stock, my livestock from this date to this date, we need to know the mode of transport. We also need to know what kind of a vehicle it is because they're obviously vehicles which are specific for, uh, for livestock and those that are not. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Vimbai. And, Sorry, uh, I think they yeah, can yeah. actually contact us. I'm not sure if uh, she managed to get our details. We can assist her. Perhaps just repeat the details. Um... Mimbai. Okay, my details are 0772-385521. Our email is zib at zib.co.zw. Thank you. Sure, then um, another one from Wellington. Wellington says, if my livestock is run over by a car, and my plot is not fenced, does the insurance still help me to pay the liabilities? Um, yes, we actually help you. That's what the liability cover is all about. It's for stray animals. We would then recommend that you put a fence after we've assisted you. All right, uh, thanks again, Vimbai. Then we have uh, Simbarashi. Simbarashi says, thanks uh, for the great presentation. Rollings, are you able to share with us? Yeah, sure, Simbarashi, as long as you are uh, on our mailing list, you will definitely receive the presentations uh, in the next few days. Then Mr. Tambo says, I learned the hard way after losing over 2,000 uh, layers three years ago due to AI, avian influenza. Farm risk management is important, okay? It's a comment there. Uh, thanks, Mr. Tambo, for that uh, comment. Then another one here says, what's your take, Vimbai, on group insurance? Um, group insurance is actually works. We, like I indicated earlier, I said we are covering from subsistence farmers, from cooperatives. I'm assuming that's what you are referring to by saying group um, uh, insurance, because for people who are being funded by non-governmental organizations, they are actually coming as groups uh, in order to meet the numbers which uh, are required. And it also helps in that you share notes. And when we come to do our presentations in terms of risk management, we also train you through the agronomists as groups and it's good for especially the subsistence farmers. 
they, they, they get exposure, they get information as groups and help each other. So I'm not sure if, you are, if that's answering your question. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think they uh, answered uh, on that one. Then um, Tapua Nashe Allen says, how about Newcastle disease for chickens? Do you cover that as well? Um, as I indicated earlier, before insurance never used to cover diseases, but now it does. It will be at an additional cost. What I know is Rowling said something about taking uh, your livestock as, as a business. You need to have an insurance cost uh, to your business. So if you have that cost and you know the risk that you are faced with, you then put it across and you should be able to pay the premium. Half the time our farmers, uh, or in the past five years, as Patrick has said, it's those that have suffered losses that appreciate taking up additional covers. For example, an epidemic, uh, like you've just said, Newcastle, you, if you haven't suffered it, you will say, ah, no, nothing will happen. So I can't pay this additional amount. But when you have suffered uh, a loss through an epidemic, you'll be willing to pay the additional premium, which is uh, costed on top of the standard insurance livestock, uh, for livestock. I'm not sure if you are answered on that one. Well, it's certainly a very valid point, uh, Vimbai. I think that uh, there is a quotation uh, from history that says, those who do not learn from history will repeat the mistakes of history. Yeah. Sure, uh, thanks uh, for, for taking that one. And um, the, the, the other question here is from Tafazwa Mamvura. He says, on, insur on insurance, do you include tagging as well for traceability in terms of animal movement? Yes, those are the requirements that we will actually give you when you're actually taking up your cover. For your goats, your cattle we would want you to do tagging. In the event that you are um, unable to do the tagging, since it's a requirement, we can as well work around it and see how best we can assist you to ensure that your, your uh, livestock are actually tagged for traceability. Because remember, we are saying we are also covering theft and uh, you would also need to know these are my beasts. And for us as well, in terms of risk management, we need to know the risk that we are really taking on because we can have 20 cows, maybe 10 of them, uh, for Malobolo and uh, they, they are not tagged, they are, belong to Babamukuru and they are not yours, something like that. So if they are tagged and we know that they belong to you, we know what we are actually insuring. And it's a requirement on taking up the livestock cover for goats, sorry, for your uh, cows. All right, uh, thanks for uh, taking that one again, Wimbai. Then another one here is uh, from Tino in Gweru. Tino says, how long does it take to get compensation after uh, losing my livestock? We take two weeks after having done everything. Our challenge, like uh, I think I had one uh, person saying, I have a problem with doing records. Record keeping is very important. If your records are in order, once you've signed your, your release, where you sign to say this we have agreed, because remember, an assessor will be sent through. You also have to provide us with the documents. You complete your claim form. Because what happens, what I've noted uh, with our clients across the board is that when it comes to completing claim forms, they take maybe a week or two weeks to uh, produce the information. And once they produce the information, an assessor can be appointed, is actually usually appointed within 48 hours maximum. They come to your farm, they verify, and uh, once they've verified, they do a report within a day. They present the findings, they present the numbers, and your policy has been in place. This should take about two days. So once you have signed off, within five working days, you should get your money. But when our insuring public come to claim, 
They then talk about the date of loss and forget the two weeks that they took in processing the, the claim <clears throat> themselves. So when they complain now, it's more of you've taken three weeks or a month to settle my claim. But in the interim, the processing pro, uh, period for our client has taken two or three weeks from their side. So we are saying there's a processing time for yourself. So the question would be settlement upon signing. I'll answer it is five days, five working days. Processing of your claim will take five working days as well. Where we appoint an assessor, the assessor does a report and sends it to the insurance company. That's why I say two weeks. But when it comes to yourself presenting the information, that now depends on the client. If you take more than three weeks, your claim process is delayed. So I'm not sure if I've answered all the question properly there. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, the last one I'll take, Patrick, I think it's, yes. it's from George. Uh, it says, it, is it possible to know roughly what you, it would cost to insure 20 head of cattle in a pen fattening model or system for a short term that is about 90 days or three months uh, then taken to the market? All right, I'll just give respond to that one by giving the average rate on your rate that is issued by insurance without putting all those loadings that I spoke about. Um, you have your value of your, your cattle. You say you put your 10,000, sorry, 100,000. You then put your 5% of the value of your cattle. So average, that will be your, 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 your premium. Okay, 5%, thanks, Vimba. 5%, yeah. Okay, all right. Thanks, uh, over to you, Patrick. Terrific, uh, Rawlings, thank you very much. And uh, especially, I think, thank you to all our farmers uh, who were a particularly active audience today. We really appreciate their participation in this process. And also just to perhaps uh, underline uh, the fact that uh, this program is brought to you by the Insurance Council of Zimbabwe. And as such, if you forget all the other names, you can always uh, 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 get details of the insurance uh, player that you prefer to use uh, or, or of your choice from the Insurance Council of Zimbabwe because they represent uh, the whole body of short-term insurers. And if I may add, nine other reinsurers as well. So uh, please uh, maintain your contact with ICZ if all else fails. But thank you everyone for all your participation. Thank you Rawlings for your contribution. Thank you Vimbai for your contribution. It was great to have you on board. Thank you for both your presentations. Uh, this uh, edition of uh, how to protect the value of your livestock investments is another production. Uh, brought to you by Brand Africa on behalf of the Insurance Council of Zimbabwe. And uh, we can assure you that we will keep you posted on the next installment in our webinars. Thank you again and have a great Friday and even better weekend. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you, Vimbai. Thank Thanks, you, Roland. Patrick. Insurance is there to protect you against the threat of financial loss caused by everyday events. It removes uncertainty by transferring the unknown consequences of losses from theft, fire, floods or accidents to an insurance company. The protection gained from paying an insurance company a regular sum of money is called a premium. By collecting premiums from many people, the insurer accumulates a pool from which losses can be paid for. We represent short-term insurance companies in Zimbabwe and are here to help you understand how they can help you with everyday insurance because you never know. For more information, call us on 0242-708-031 up to 2 or visit our offices at number 4 Josiah Tongogara Avenue, Harare.